Hey everyone, I'm Jared Hall from Entertainment Weekly. We are at Comic-Con 2018 and joining me now is Seth Green. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we were just talking before we started here. You have, you have already explored the uh, Comic-Con Convention Center floor, yeah? Was yeah. there, was there uh, would you say, like a, a, a costume, a cosplay in particular you're seeing a lot of? Because you've been, you've been coming here for years, so That's you're true. used to... Seen a lot of great costumes. Uh, there's a lot of love for Deadpool this year. That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. There's still a bunch of Game of Thrones. Uh, mm -hmm. You see some random stuff. Um, uh, I saw a bunch of guys dressed up like Stiller's family and Royal Tannenbaum. So that really? was fun. Yeah. People go, oh, it's a lot of mashups too. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fun. That's fun. Um, how long have you been coming here? Did you start as a fan, or was it always with a? Project? Yeah, no, I was always interested in this stuff. Uh, the first time I came to San Diego was 94, I guess. Okay. And then I, I went every, but it, it's evolved as a thing. Sure. It's, be, it's become more of a grassroots marketing yeah. campaign yeah. Than, a, than a meetup for people yeah. who feel ostracized by society for loving all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. But, the, but that grassroots campaign, I'm sure is great and you appreciate it, especially for something like Robot Chicken, that like people can't get enough of that, especially down here. They want those bits, anything you're gonna give them. Um, it's, so how have you, I personally felt like, like Comic-Con is like, worked into your professional lifestyle to your benefit? Well, uh, a lot of our, our primary uh, target audience is collected here, yeah. uh, enjoying all the same stuff that we mm -hmm. celebrate on a show like Robot mm -hmm. Chicken. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives us a great direct access to them and uh, gives, a, gives us an opportunity to create a, an intimate experience that yeah. continues to drive passion. Mm -hmm. You know, people like all this stuff, so we like to get in a room with them and say, ah, oh, we like you too. And then <laughs> right. This is yeah. easy. And, and thanks for show, watching. And show them something cool you haven't seen. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, exactly. nothing, you're nothing without your audience. Yeah, so. Right, right, exactly. Um, when, did, because you, I, I, Robot Chicken aside, obviously Family Guy, my God, the list goes on and on uh, for, for how many shows you lend your voice to. When did you first discover you had those vocal acting talents that, you know, there was a variety in your voice? Ooh, early on when I was very, very young, I watched a lot of cartoons or television and I tried to oh, uh, imitate yeah, yeah. everything from Sesame Street to Monty Python. So before I was acting professionally, when I was seven, I had already practiced going into all those different vocal intonations mm. or especially accents and yeah. things like that. That's, I was really good with Donald Duck and Woody Woodpecker, and then I hit puberty. This is hard voices, all over. man. Yeah, yeah, puberty killed it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I have the funny story to tell you. When you did Four Kings for NBC, yeah. right, NBC, there was a scene you guys did, and you're in a Panda Express-like place, and you're sure. like, the key to getting more orange chicken is yeah. to stall. That's you right, that's Randall Parks. Chicken and... And I try to do it every time I go, and it doesn't work. Are you serious? I legit try. My friend and I, <laughs> we thought it was one of the funniest scenes ever, and we do uh, that, thanks. and it just, yeah. The guy who plays the the uh, the checker in the yeah. Chinese restaurant is Randall Park. Uh, Randall Park, amazing Randall Park, fresh yeah. off the boat. Yeah. yeah, he's great. He's great. Uh, I've got to ask you before we wrap up here. You uh, helped bring to life uh, several many. Uh, I don't want to say many years ago, but several years ago. Uh, it, Richie, and oh sure, the uh, the met, original miniseries. Yes, yes, yes. and uh, you've met Finn Wolfhard. Of course, yeah. Is that then like a special bonding? Like uh, only a certain number of people <laughs> know what it's like to experience that world. Maybe. I mean, our, our experiences on the, the project were so different. Yeah. Mine was in the 80s. Steve, Stephen King meant a different thing. He's become True. even more indelibly iconic. Mm -hmm. the, the, the project itself has gotten its own you know, fan base ar around it. We've also, as a culture, become a little bit more comfortable with different iterations of things mm -hmm. at different time periods. So we definitely got to share some like, ah, what's up? <laughs> right, what's right. up, Richie? We're both with beep beep. Mm -hmm. And um, you're, <laughs> are you trying to get a cameo in the second movie? I mean, I would go um, for it. You know, I, I don't think I'd say no, but I, I think it was pretty obvious when they cast Finn that I wasn't going to play him as an what? adult. We don't like anything. <laughs> True. like each other. Good point. Plus, Bill Hader is going to be awesome in that. So. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. He's amazing. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. My we pleasure. really appreciate it. Right on. Take care. Enjoy your Comic-Con. Thanks, Thanks, you too.